Equalize 2 will probably be the most frequently used plugin from the Acon Digital Mastering Suite because it can correct flaws in the recording equipment, determine the frequency ranges and their composition, and also change the balance of frequencies both inside a separate audio track and in the mix as a whole. It's an incredibly powerful tool, no matter how you look at it. The uniqueness of Equalize 2, first of all, lies in the three different phase modes, minimum phase, mixed phase and linear phase. Minimum phase provides a traditional analog EQ with zero latency. This will introduce phase shifts during equalization. Let's see how it looks in the graphs. The frequency response changes according to the EQ band settings. No surprises here, but let's switch to the phase response. The more intensive processing we use, the more we change, or I would even say, distort the original phase response of the audio recording. This is dangerous because it can alter the natural timber of the instruments, as well as introduce phase problems when mixing EQ'd audio tracks. To solve the problem of phase distortion, we can use another Equalize 2 operating mode, Linear Phase. Let's switch to it and look at the graphs again. The phase response is imperfectly flat. Looks gorgeous, doesn't it? Partly. With Linear Phase Equalization, other troubles arise. The so-called pre and post ringing. Let's look at the impulse response graph. You will notice that the original signal was delayed in time, and we also received a new signal before and after the original. These are the pre-ringing and post-ringing effects. Of course, post-ringing distorts the original signal, but the pre-ringing creates the most problems because it smears the original transients, or more simply, the attack of audio recordings. This is extremely harmful to drums, percussion, or active acoustic guitar. What to do in such a situation? It's simple. Use the unique mix phase mode, developed by Acon Digital to take the best of both worlds and be able to equalize audio recordings with minimal phase distortion and minimal pre-ringing. Let's take a look at the graphs. As you can see, in this mode, the phase of the audio signals during processing does not change as much as it did in the minimum phase mode, and we can control the ringing created in the linear phase mode by changing the delay in the range from 5 to 120 ms. By choosing a delay of about 20 ms in Equalize, the pre-ringing is masked by our hearing and the maximum peak of the impulse response remains clearly aligned in time. From a theoretical point of view, all these nuances may seem incomprehensible or even frightening, but in practice, everything's not so difficult. Let's take a look at some processing examples. The easiest way to hear the difference between the different modes of operation of the phase can be on the drums. For percussion, the minimum phase mode preserves the transients, while in the mixed phase mode, we hear less bass attenuation. In this context, we choose between a sharper and more full-bodied, yet softened sound. Consider another example, a kick. Mixed phase seems more appropriate here as it preserves the fullness of the low frequencies and also slightly softens the overly aggressive attack in the high frequencies. Another more extreme example is the beat track. Here, the difference between minimum and mix phase is even easier to hear. With minimum phase, the EQ is more controllable. You hear a good balance between low and high frequencies, while the transients are left virtually untouched. 
In mixed phase mode, attacks are very blurry and the sound of the audio track seems boomy and loose. A huge difference in sound considering that we didn't touch the equalizer bands. In both modes, they shared identical settings. I use the linear phase mode very rarely, most often on the master bus while equalizing the entire mix, when I do not want to change the sound obtained during the mixing process, but still need some adjustments in the frequency response. The main drawback of this mode is the pre-ringing added during processing, which very much erodes the transients and is especially noticeable on drums and percussion. There are no clear rules regulating when to use which phase mode. However, as a general guideline, I recommend the following. Always start with mix phase, and it will work great in most situations, especially when it comes to mid-range instruments like guitars or synthesizers. Be careful with percussive instruments. Minimum phase will most likely work best here, as it will keep the transients intact, but at the same time, adjust the frequency response of the audio recordings as you need it. Use your ears and taste in music, and you will never go wrong with your choice. Thank you, and see you in the next video.